Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to DC Central and in today's video after a very long break uh, I'm going to be discussing the recent news that has come out recently uh, Regarding some new shows coming to the Arrowverse over the next couple of years, which is all very very exciting So let's dive straight into it Actually before we dive right into that news I will actually address why I have been gone for so long and I know I've been saying this pretty much in every single video I've made sort of over the last few months particularly this year uh, but it's simply the reason why I've been gone is that simply you know it's been kind of the summer season and uh, you know it's there's not really been a lot of news that's come out regarding the Arrowverse you know it's the way it is at the moment all the shows are currently filming and obviously with COVID and stuff like that all the shows have been delayed all their premieres have been delayed until January. You know, typically, if COVID wasn't a thing, we would have got the premieres for the shows last month, and we would be talking about The Flash Season 7 and Supergirl Season 6 right now. Uh, but unfortunately, due to COVID, that's all been delayed, so we haven't really had much things to talk about in regards to the, to the world of the Arrowverse and DC. Uh, so there hasn't really been much news, but as of today and as of sort of last week and as of last night, we actually do have some pretty exciting news to talk about. So in the last few days, we've had the announcement of two brand new series that are being planned to go to series at the CW, both of which are new DC properties. And these are both very, very exciting. Now, the first one that we want to talk about here, this was announced a few days ago, and that is a Painkiller series, which is a spin-off of Black Lightning. Now, this was very surprising to me when I read it. I thought this was very interesting news because... Out of all the Arrowverse shows to get a new spin-off, Black Lightning was not the one I was expecting. But, if any character on Black Lightning was to get a spin-off, if I had to choose any character on Black Lightning to get their own spin-off, it would have been Khalil Payne, aka Painkiller, because I think he is such an interesting character, one of the best on the show. I think unanimously people agree he is one of the best characters in the series. So to give him his own show, I think he's definitely the character that makes the most sense to do that with. But what will this show necessarily be about? Because this is what I've seen a lot of people talk about, and I have to agree with this myself. I don't know if the character of Painkiller has enough leverage to withstand his own series. Maybe just for one season, perhaps, but beyond that, I don't know if the character of Painkiller has enough you know, leverage within his character to sustain an entire show based around him. Uh, even though I think he is one of the best characters on Black Lightning, I think he has a fantastic arc so far, and I find his character very engaging and very entertaining, I don't know if he has enough within his character to sustain an entire series, because he is just a side character. Like, that's what he is on Black Lightning. He's a side character and kind of a recurring villain, anti-hero kind of thing. Um, and like I say, he's a great character on Black Lightning, but is he going to be able to be in his own series as the lead? I don't know. Again, for one season perhaps, but the way the CW works with these DC shows is that they like to make them go for, you know, six, seven, eight seasons. So I don't know if that's necessarily going to be the case. So as excited as I am for Painkiller, especially the description they released for it makes it seem like it's going to be a much more of a darker, more vigilante style show. You know, something in the vein of Arrow and Batwoman, which is a lot more tailored to my taste. Um, I'm very excited about all that. And, you know, if you saw my review for Season 3 of Black Lightning, which I did back in the summer, I have really loved Black Lightning as a show. I think it's so good. I think it's one of the best in the Arrowverse. To be honest, it's probably the best Arrowverse show on right now. Uh, I think it's so fantastic. And I'm excited for a Black Lightning spin-off. I just don't know if I was ready for Khalil as a character to leave Black Lightning and to go into his own series like this. Again, I'll see how it goes. I'm definitely going to watch it. I'm excited for it. I'm just not 100% sure that this is what I would have gone for. But... I'll wait and see. You know, I think it could be a great show. It could be fantastic. Again, doing a darker, more vigilante style show. You know, now that Arrow's gone, I think this will fill that void. Uh, but I'm just very interested to see how it will actually pan out as a show, given the fact that it's going to be based around a side character from Black Lightning. Also, Khalil has been a pretty integral character to Black Lightning. You know, he's kind of been, in each season, he's been very important to the characters of the Pierce, especially, you know, Jennifer Pierce. You know, they've obviously been very close. They have a relationship and things like that. So is that just going to go away? Or does that also mean that China Anne McLean, who plays Jen, is going to leave Black Lightning and go over to Painkiller? I don't know. I mean, in the description, it does say that Painkiller goes to a new city. So he's going to be moving away from Freeland. So we'll see you know, whether Jen goes with him or whether she remains on Black Lightning. I mean, I'm guessing she would probably remain on Black Lightning, but we'll see. Um, but what we do know is that we are going to be getting a backdoor pilot for this show uh, in Black Lightning Season 4. So the season that is currently filming and that is coming up, uh, Episode 7, I believe, is going to be the backdoor pilot for this. So kind of like how in Arrow Season 8 we got Episode 9 as the backdoor pilot for Green Arrow and the Canaries, uh, we are getting a backdoor pilot for Painkiller in Black Lightning Season 4. 
and this is going to be basically smack bang in the middle of the season because I believe season four of Black Lightning is listed for 13 episodes, which I'm pretty excited about because season one was 13 episodes and I think that worked brilliantly. So smack bang in the middle sounds about right and I think that this could be a really good way of gauging the interest and seeing whether the interest for a painkiller series is there and this could be a really good way you know you can spend the first half of season four kind of wrapping up his story within Black Lightning and then using this you know uh, backdoor pilot episode to send him into his own future. Now the other series that got announced which was announced last night very late last night uh, is a Wonder Girl series. Now this is really cool because this is such a new character, so much so that this character, I believe, hasn't even properly reached the pages of DC Comics as of right now. She's going to be a part of the Future State storyline, which I don't actually think has started yet. So this is a very new character who has already been pitched to have their own series on the CW in the Arrowverse. This is so exciting. I think this is so cool. She's also going to be the very first Latino lead of any DC TV show, which, you know, they haven't got a Latino lead across the Arrowverse yet. You know, out of all the main characters who are leads, you know, when you look at The Flash and Batwoman, Legends, whatever, we haven't got a Latino lead yet. So this is going to be the first one of a Latino lead, which is really nice. And this character of Wonder Girl, uh, you know, from what we do know of her, she is basically the new Wonder Woman in the Future State storyline. So... It's very interesting that they are calling the show Wonder Girl instead of Wonder Woman, given the fact that this character is technically Wonder Woman, but I guess they're probably doing that just to avoid confusion. Uh, but still, this new series, it's kind of hard to talk about because we don't know much about the character because, again, she's so new. She hasn't even been really in the pages of DC Comics right now. So she's such a new character. We don't really know a lot about her. So that also means that we don't really know what to expect from this series. Um, however, you know, I was talking about how with Painkiller, we'll see how that goes and how that's going to sustain its own series and whether it will get picked up and stuff like that. I, I can't see the series not getting picked up. I mean, a Wonder Girl series, this is just perfect. Like, it just makes so much sense. This is such a type of show that the CW would go for. I think that it is going to be brilliant for all their audience members. It's going to work brilliantly in the Arrowverse. I just think this is just a really obvious pick for them. And if this doesn't get picked up to series, I'll be very, very shocked. Um... And, you know, a Wonder Woman series is definitely something that's interesting. We've seen the Arrowverse play with Wonder Woman stuff before, like in Legends of Tomorrow Season 3, we saw Helen of Troy come in, and she kind of became Wonder Woman in the Legends finale, if you remember that, and she went to Themyscira, like we actually saw Themyscira, so technically we've already known that exists in the Arrowverse already. So, they've played with some Wonder Woman ideas before, but now we're actually getting an actual basic Amazonian Wonder Woman character as a main player in the Arrowverse, which is very, very exciting. Now, what does this mean for Wonder Woman? Like, will we see her on the show? Who knows? I mean, they could play it like they played, you know, Superman uh, in Supergirl and stuff like that, where they kind of tease her in the first season and then we'll see her later on. You know, because we still don't know if Bruce Wayne's ever going to show up in Batwoman. I, given the fact that Kate Kane's gone from Batwoman, I don't know if we'll actually see Bruce Wayne now. Uh, but... You know, whether we actually see Diana is a very interesting case, and I'm very excited to see who they're going to cast in this role, who they're going to cast as the, you know, ensemble piece for this. I think this is just a very exciting show, and I think this could be very different, very unique for the Arrowverse, and this character would be very, very powerful, which would be a nice dynamic to throw in to the Justice League of the Arrowverse. I think we're really starting to see this new sort of era of the Arrowverse come in now. You know, we're seeing a lot of shows, you know, obviously Arrow's gone, Supergirl's going. I'm assuming Legends is probably going to go pretty soon. Um, so we're seeing all these new shows come in like Batwoman, Superman and Lois, Stargirl, you know, now Wonder Girl, Painkiller. We have all these new shows coming in that are kind of being this new era of the Arrowverse. You know, the old era is kind of dying out. It's kind of going. We still have Flash around and I'm, I'm assuming Flash will probably go to season nine, season 10, something like that. And then we'll see that come to its conclusion. But, you know, other than The Flash, you know, all these older shows are kind of on the way out. And now we have all these new shows coming in, which is really, really exciting. And I think when you look at Painkiller, you know, a really dark, interesting character who could be a really cool character on his own right. And then you've got Wonder Girl, who's this incredibly exciting, incredibly new character who's going to bring in this whole new audience. I think it's just a really great way of getting people back into the Arrowverse and engaged in it again. And just creating this really fun diverse interesting universe that is so much unlike anything we have on tv or even in dc films but what does this mean for green arrow and the canaries i mentioned it earlier obviously this is the arrow spin-off that was kind of teased at the end of season eight of arrow and is something they've kind of been setting up for a while uh we have not heard anything about this show we have not heard a peep about it for i don't even know like i guess since the end of season eight like since the backdoor pilot came out um 
honestly, I think the show's dead. I mean, they haven't said it's dead. They haven't officially come out and said this show isn't happening anymore. Um, according to a report that came out, I believe around the time that Painkiller was announced, they were saying that apparently it's still in discussion, like it's still in talks. But if they're still discussing it at this point, and you know, it's been that long since the backdoor pilot, I just can't see this show happening. And that does sadden me, you know, obviously Arrow is my favorite show of all time. I would love an Arrow spinoff, especially because this was going to be focusing on, you know, Katie Cassidy as Laurel. Um, you know, and also Juliana as as Dinah. I would I was definitely down for that, you know, and I rewatched season eight like a month or so ago. And I actually really enjoyed that backdoor pilot a lot more on the second watch of it. And I thought, yeah, I really want this show. Uh, but it seems like it's just not going to happen, uh, especially, you know, we're getting so many shows announced now for the Arrowverse. We have so many new things coming in. You know, we have Superman and Lois. We have Painkiller. We now have Wonder Girl. I just don't think there's going to be any space for Green Arrow and the Canaries, you know, on the on the CW schedule. I don't think that's going to be there. Um, so this Green Arrow and the Canary show, I honestly think it's dead. I think it's dead in the water. I don't think it's going to go anywhere, unfortunately, um, which is a real, real shame because I would love to see the show happen. You know, I just want to see Arrow continue its legacy, even though its legacy is the Arrowverse, of course, you know, starting with Flash, Supergirl, everything, you know, it, it, that's all Arrow's legacy, but I would have loved to have seen Arrow kind of continue in its own bloodline, if that makes sense, you know, get its own kind of spin-off, especially when we have literally Black Lightning getting its own spin-off and stuff like that. I would have loved to have seen Arrow get one, but I guess the interest wasn't there. I guess people weren't really too hot on it. Even though I do believe that, aside from the crossover episode, I believe that the backdoor pilot was the most viewed episode of season eight. I could be wrong. You might have to fact check me on that one, but I believe that is the case. You know, other than the crossover episode, which obviously was the biggest of the season, uh, I believe that the backdoor pilot was the second highest viewed episode of the season. Um, but. I guess the interest wasn't there, I guess people didn't care about it enough, and even though I'm seeing great people like Bam Smack Powell, for example, online, um, you know, Michael Patterson, who's doing a great job at campaigning for this show, um, I just don't think the the, the, the love and the, the support for the Green Arrow and the Canaries is overwhelming enough to kind of convince the CW that this is something they should invest into. Um, and, you know, Arrow's kind of viewership did dwindle in the last few seasons, you know, after season four, a lot of people left the show and never really came back. So I guess its returns were dwindling. They didn't really know what to do with it. And it did kind of end on a whimper, in my opinion, with season eight. So I don't know. I, I guess it's just the interest wasn't there. So in my opinion, you know, looking at this news particularly, now we have two new brand new Arrowverse shows coming in. I think Green Arrow and the Canaries is officially dead. And on that sour note, that is the end of today's video. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you did enjoy it. Again, I'm sorry I've been gone for a little while. It's just, there's been nothing to talk about. But as soon as now we do have something to talk about, I'm right on here to make a video. Um, and of course, you know, make sure you let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think about these new shows? You know, are you excited for Painkiller? Are you excited for Wonder Girl? Both? None? Whatever? Let me know in the comments down below. Let's have a cool chat about it down below because I'm very interested to hear what your thoughts are on these different shows because it seems like there's quite a lot of diversing opinions on them. So I'm very interested to hear what you have to say in the comments down below. And as always, guys, if you want to see more DC content like this, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. You know, the shows aren't far off now. Uh, in January, we will see them debut. So if you want to keep up to date with my reviews and my thoughts on all the shows, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload as and when they go up and hope to see you guys again in my next video.